Okay, I'm Mark Anderson with American Free Press, national writer for that weekly uh, news weekly here in Washington, D.C. And I'm with Mike Hargadon and Collins Bailey, two Baltimore residents who are running for Congress on Ron Paul's ideas, basically on his platform. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Good day. We're Actually, here at, we're down in 5th District, which is Southern Maryland. He's up in Baltimore. But I'm in Baltimore. Very good. Okay, so you're in... Uh, 5th District, Maryland, and 7th District. And, 7th District. Right, right, right. and we're here at the April 15, everybody's favorite day rally on the West Capitol lawn uh, being held for Ron Paul. And uh, gentlemen, now starting with you, Mike, uh, when did you decide to run for U.S. Congress uh, based on the basis of Ron Paul's ideas? Uh, basically when I got involved in the uh, delegate and alternate delegate uh, process, I, I was a Ron Paul supporter and uh, actually Collins encouraged me to think about it because he said we need people to step up and uh, I'm running against uh, Congressman Cummings and he ran unopposed last time so I thought well we at least ought to have somebody run against himself. That's basically how it happened. Tell us a little snippet about Congressman Cummings. What's his deal? Well, if you want to compare him to me, I've taken some pledges. I've taken no new tax pledge. He's, he got a 4% four, 4 from, uh, from the ratings at F and F in, in taxes. I've taken the uh, earmark reform pledge. Most of the money that he brings back to the 7th District is through earmarks. I've taken a, a no PAC money unless it deals with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. His PAC money comes from all over the place. He owes a lot of people favors. And I've also taken a term limit pledge. I'm not going to do any more than three terms if I get elected. He's on his seventh term now. Well, when do you get elected? Yeah, now, some, now, some people say that term limits are unnecessary because the ballot box should be the term decider. Uh, Helen Chenoweth once served in Congress and only and took a term limit pledge, and some people say she got out too soon, that she should have stuck it out. What about that? Well, I, uh, to be honest with you, I don't feel like I'm a, a politician so much, and if I could get in there and make a change in three year, in three terms, I have people who are behind me that are being biting at the bullet to get in there. So I'm more than willing to step aside and help them get, in, get some fresh blood. And how about you, Collins? What's your story? Uh, what inspired you to run? Is it is it much like Mike's, or is it a little different? Or? Well, it's pretty much like Mike's. You know, it's very interesting. Out of the eight congressional districts in Maryland, his and mine were the only two where there's no challenger in 2006. And so I felt like that was a real uh, pity that there wasn't an opportunity for dialogue. Because Congress, what they're doing, they really need to answer to the people for it. Billion dollars a day in deficit, $9.3 trillion in debt, $70 trillion in entitlement obligations. That's uh, $628,000 per every full-time worker, $281,000 for every man, woman, child, and illegal alien. But you know, I've always followed you know, what's going on in Washington. And uh, I was disappointed when nobody ran in 2006. We had somebody pulled out the last minute. So I've been watching it ever since 2006, and nobody was stepping up. And you, you keep, hey, you do it, you do it. And finally, well, you're the one pointing the finger. So we uh, we went ahead and filed to, to run. And uh, being involved in the Ron Paul campaign was just a reinforcement of everything we've been doing anyway. Now, you're, it goes without saying, you're both Republicans. Right. Yes. Now, you're, so you're going to be running... Um, the Maryland primary was February the 12th. Okay, and, and we won our primary. And he he won his as well. So you both won your primary. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Uh, and so then uh, you're you're pretty much looking good here. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, we're going to be running against the, the incumbents. And the interesting thing is, I think in Maryland is that out of the eight congressional districts, four of those are, came out of the Ron Paul movement. So, so when the Maryland Republican Party looks at their candidates, they're looking at Ron Paul sitting there. At least 50%, 50 of them, uh, yeah. the presence of his ideas yes, and his exactly. influence. Yeah. Uh, well, this is very encouraging. Now, what about, you're both challenging incumbents who are both seeking re-election, right? That's correct. The, My, mine is uh, Congressman Hoyer, the majority leader. Uh, it's with the first name? I'm running against Steny Hoyer. Denny Hoyer. Steny. 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 Steny Hoyer. Steny? Yeah, the, Steny. the majority leader. The yeah. number two man. Under, yeah. You know, uh, Nancy Pelosi's uh, you know. underling. Yes. yes. And then you're running against Elijah Cummings. He was he was the head of the uh, Black Caucus, uh, Congressional Black Caucus, for for a number of years. I'm not sure if he's still there now, but he's been there for a while. Now, do you gentlemen anticipate? Uh, I suppose it goes without saying, but how much of an uphill battle is it going to be to challenge these incumbents? Incumbency is a great advantage, let's not deny it. Uh, is the Ron Paul revolution creating enough of a tidal wave to where them running a campaign as usual won't be enough? That all, the, that all they have to do is have their name on the ballot and spend their uh, well-heeled money and that's all it's going to take? 
or is the are the uh, is the is the climate changing where it's not going to be so simple just to go right back into office? Well, it's two things, and you know, go I ahead. jumped in front no, of this time. It's two things. You know, uh, Congress has a 14 percent approval rating, so his and, and my base is 86 percent. That's pretty good. That should put us over the top. <laughs> But the problem is that uh, the average person, and this is not meant to be negative, but the average person, you know, they just like to go with the flow with the winter, you know, whatever. That's why we've got the people up there now as the presidential candidates we have. You know, if you poll the exit polls, they said that most of the people that were polled were for Ron Paul, but they didn't think he could win, so they voted for the other guy. So our job is to, to educate the public as to what's going on in Washington and then say, now look, you really have a choice. You don't, if you don't like what's going on, 14% approval rating, you don't have to take it. And uh, I think it's a, a, a big opportunity. we got uh, plenty of upward mobility. But uh, you know, love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So you've got the, the, the Ron Paul uh, changing the thinking, getting more people involved in politics, getting people to think about issues that used to be taboo. You've got that going for you. You've, Congress happens to have a very low approval rating. You've got that going for you. So to say I'm an incumbent in this largely disapproved agency is not a real big feather in your hat That's right. for these guys. Uh, I've never heard much about the congressional approval rating. Uh, uh, is it much like the presidential one? Is it based on some sort of survey? Yeah, well, the president's about 36%. He's almost three times what uh, you know, the, the congressional approval rating is. So, you know, their, their, their ratings are horrible, and sometimes that translates to votes. You know, it, it did in, uh, in 94, et cetera. And I think the best thing is if our uh, uh, challengers get out there and say, we're the incumbent, we're the incumbent. I don't think that's a, a, a winning issue in this particular election. Like putting a target on their rear end, you know? Yeah. Well, very interesting, guys. We uh, also have the Internet this year. You see, the Internet gets stronger and stronger. And, and you can do through the Internet what you couldn't have done 10 years ago. So I think that this is the beginning of a change in American politics. And we want to be on the front edge trying to help people to uh, apply their uh, energies and their frustrations. Do you have sons, grandsons that are looking at what you're doing and maybe going to follow in your footsteps? I have four kids, two grandsons, and uh, I just like to add, I'm a dentist, so I take my pole with the chair side. And, 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 and I want to tell you, the people in this country are waking up. They may not have voted for Ron Paul, but they knew he was there, and now a lot of them are wishing they had. I think, there, I think there's a sentiment in the country where, where with the economy and everything going on the way it is, that they're looking for something else. And we don't have that Ron Paul marginalization that the media did. We're coming up, and, they, and they, they don't have, I don't think they can, I don't even know we're coming. We're like under the radar screen. So I'm hoping it comes a time when we can get in. Last question. I've read about a woman from uh, Upper Michigan and other areas that are also doing what you gentlemen are doing, running for Congress or Senate or even local offices on a Ron Paul philosophy. Do you know of people in neighboring states or other people in other states across the country that are doing what you're doing, maybe that have been in touch with you? Or you been in touch with them is, is what's happening in Maryland happening oh yeah I just, I just I just met four candidates up there if you go up behind the line there they they have a special tag area you can wear and they it's set up for that purpose so we can all get in there and compare notes and, and kind of help each other well, on the internet there's a website Liberty candidates it's got 42 of them now it should be you know uh, 435 plus you know the one third of the Senate but it's 400 is 42 and all of those are, are, are candidates that believe in the smaller government sound money, you know, uh, American independence, uh, limited uh, constitutional government, personal responsibility. Non-intervention is foreign policy. Sure, personal responsibility, economic and personal liberty. And so, you know, the, the back two years ago, I didn't see any of that. In fact, our districts didn't have anybody run against the incumbent. The, these are these formerly taboo subjects that now yes. can be discussed yes. sure. intelligently. Well, thank you, gentlemen. And uh, that concludes our video. Uh, interview with uh, uh, Mike Hargadon and Collins Bailey running for Congress in Maryland on the Ron Paul philosophy. I'm Mark Anderson with Across the Nation for American Free Press. We'll see you next time.